Assalamualaikum and a very good morning. Now, let us revise Form 3 Science KSSM Chapter 3 Part 1. With the title Transportation. There are two types of substances which will enter our body and at the same time there are substances that will exit from our body so let us look at the first notes with the red color here every cell needs oxygen for cell respiration or cellular respiration where there will be an oxidation of glucose Second, nutrients to obtain energy. At the same time, our body also need to eliminate carbon dioxide and waste products. For example, urea. What is transportation? Transportation is a system that carries useful substances to all parts of the body and eliminates waste products from the body. There are two types of transport system in organisms. First, the one involved simple organisms or unicellular organisms and the second one involved complex organisms or multicellular organisms. Let us look at the transport system in simple organisms first. Unicellular organisms are organisms made up of only one cell. Example, amoeba, euglena, and paramecium. Oxygen and nutrients enter directly through cell membrane and at the same time carbon dioxide and waste products eliminate directly to the external out of the environment. Transport system in complex organisms involve multicellular organisms multicellular organisms such as human, vertebrates, and plants are organisms made up more than one cell. We have specialized transport system because we have a large volume. That's why oxygen and nutrients enter slowly into our body. Carbon dioxide and waste products eliminate slowly. Both transport system in simple and complex organisms have one common that is both involve diffusion process. Do you still remember what is meant by diffusion process? Diffusion is the movement of a substance from an area of high concentration to an area of lower concentration. The only difference in both of the transport system in simple and complex organisms is complex organisms specialized transport system occur much slower then the transport system involve simple organisms. With the breeds such as mammals, reptiles, amphibians, birds and fish, which are categorized as complex organisms, have a specialized transport system that is the blood circulatory system. There are differences in the blood circulatory system among them in the number of times the blood flow through their heart. 
in one complete cycle to all parts of the body. Among these five types of vertebrates, only fish has single blood circulatory system where blood flows through the heart only once in one complete cycle to the whole body. Meanwhile, for the rest of amphibians, reptiles, mammals, and birds, they share one thing in common that is they have double blood circulatory system where blood flows through the heart twice in one complete cycle to the whole body. Mammals and birds have two atriums and two ventricles. Meanwhile, for amphibians and reptiles, both of them have two atriums and one ventricle. Compare to fish, fish has only one atrium and one ventricle. In fish, the oxygenated blood flows from the heart to the whole body, changes to deoxygenated blood, and then flows back into the heart. At this stage, we can see that the blood flows through the heart in fish only once in one complete cycle. For amphibians, the oxygenated blood flows from the heart to the brain and a mixture of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood flows to all other parts of the body except the lungs. Oxygenated blood changes into deoxygenated blood and finally flows back into the heart. In amphibians, we can see the mixture of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood. For reptiles, mammals, and birds, the oxygenated blood flows from the heart to the whole body except the lungs, then changes to deoxygenated blood and flows back into the heart. Human blood circulatory system involves the function of the organ heart and blood vessels. There are three types of blood vessels, namely arteries, capillaries, and veins. Teacher purposely put the arteries in yellow color and veins in green colors to make you all easier to digest this topic in the next slide. This is the simple structure of the human heart. I will share with you how the blood circulates in our heart by using two different colors. The red colors referring to the blood which carries oxygen or we simply call it as oxygenated blood. On the other hand, the blue color represents the blood which carries carbon dioxide or namely as deoxygenated blood. Our heart contains four chambers two chambers on the left up and down and the other two chambers on the right up and down so first let us look at the heart which i colored with red color which involve only the oxygenated blood blood which carries only oxygen Oxygenated blood 
from the lungs enter the pulmonary veins then enters the left atrium when the left atrium contracts then the oxygenated blood flow into the left ventricle when the left ventricle contracts oxygenated blood is forced to flow out into the aorta to be carried to all parts of the body except the lungs so oxygenated blood pathway is from number one goes to number two number three and finally reach to number four the altar now let us look at the blue part of the heart the oxygenated blood blood carries carbon dioxide the oxygenated blood from the whole body except the lungs and stir vena cava then enters the right atrium when the right atrium contracts then the oxygenated blood is forced to flow into the right ventricle when the right ventricle contracts the oxygenated blood is forced to flow up and out into the pulmonary artery to be carried to the lungs only so the oxygenated blood blood without oxygen flows from number one vena cava goes to number two number three and finally reach to number four the pulmonary artery in textbook page 87 you will find that there are three more special structures in the heart the tricuspid valve on the right and the bicuspid valve on the left are essential for make sure the blood flow down from up to downwards from upper chambers to down chambers meanwhile the semilunar valve functions is to ensure that the blood flow only in one direction and not flowing back into the ventricle and the last special character is the septum which differentiate or make a boundary between the left and the right side of the heart this is how we write the oxygenated blood pathway in human heart from the lungs oxygenated blood enters the pulmonary vein then enters the left atrium when the left atrium contracts then the oxygenated blood flow into the left ventricle through bicuspid valve bicuspid valve ensure the blood flow only in one direction from left atrium to the left ventricle when the left ventricle contracts oxygenated blood is forced to flow up and out into the aorta and finally oxygenated blood carry to all parts of the body except the lungs for the oxygenated blood pathway in our heart 
from all parts of the body except the lungs, the oxygenated enters vena cava, then enters the right atrium. When the right atrium contracts, the oxygenated blood is forced to flow down into the right ventricle. Look at the tricuspid valve. Its function is to ensure that the blood flow in only one direction from right atrium and to the right ventricle. When the right ventricle contracts, the oxygenated blood is forced to flow out into the pulmonary artery. And finally, the blood without oxygen is carried to the lungs.